Portsmouth is a port and island city within the ceremonial county of Hampshire, England. It is the most densely populated city in the United Kingdom, the city forms part of the South Hampshire built-up area. The city's history can be traced to Roman times. A significant naval port for centuries, Portsmouth has the world's oldest dry dock and was England's first line of defense during the French invasion in 1545. Special Palmerston forts were built in 1859 in anticipation of another invasion from continental Europe. By the early 19th century, Portsmouth was the most heavily fortified city in the world, and was considered the world's greatest naval port at the height of the British Empire throughout Pax Britannica. The world's first mass production line was set up in the city, making it the most industrialized site in the world. During the Second World War, the city was a pivotal embarkation point for the D-Day landings and was bombed extensively in the Portsmouth Blitz, which resulted in the deaths of 930 people. In 1982, the city housed the entirety of the attacking forces in the Falklands War. Her Majesty's Yacht Britannia left the city to oversee the transfer of Hong Kong in 1997 which marked for many the end of the empire. Portsmouth is one of the world's best-known ports. HMNB Portsmouth is the largest dockyard for the Royal Navy and is home to two-thirds of the UK's surface fleet. The city is home to some famous ships, including HMS Warrior, the Tudor Carrick Mary Rose and Horatio Nelson's flagship. HMS Victory the world's oldest naval ship still in commission. The former HMS Vernon Naval Shore establishment has been redeveloped as a retail park known as Gun Wharf Keys. Portsmouth is among the few British cities with two cathedrals, the Anglican Cathedral of St. Thomas and the Roman Catholic Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist. The waterfront and Portsmouth Harbour are dominated by the Spinnaker Tower one of the United Kingdom's tallest structures. The Palmerston forts that encircle Portsmouth were built in response to the 1859 Royal Commission dealing with the perceived threat of a French invasion. The forts were intended to defend the dockyard in Portsmouth. These man-made island forts were originally built to protect the eastern approaches to Portsmouth Harbour from attack by enemy forces. The four armour-plated forts were designed by Captain E. H. Stewart, overseen by Assistant Inspector General of Fortifications, Colonel W. F. D. Jervois. Construction took place between 1865 and 1880, at a total cost of £1,177,805. By the time the forts had been completed, the threat of invasion had long since passed and although the forts were armed and rearmed as technology advanced, they were never used in anger. They were decommissioned in 1956. The Spinnaker Tower at a height of 560 feet, 170 meters, is two and a half times as high as Nelson's Column, making it one of the tallest accessible structures in the United Kingdom outside London. The tower is visible around Portsmouth, changing the horizon of the area. It can be seen from the Isle of Wight, the Manhood Peninsula, High Down Gardens, Sisbury Ring in Worthing, and Nine Barrow Down in the Purbeck Hills, Dorset. The tower was originally to be named the Portsmouth Millennium Tower and was designed by local firm HGP architects and engineering consultants Scott Wilson and built by Molo, reflects Portsmouth's maritime history through its being modeled and named after a spinnaker, a type of sail that balloons outward. As a monument to commemorate the Millennium celebrations in the year 2000, the project was conceived in 1995 with an original opening date planned for late 1999. The tower was opened on the 18th of October, 2005. 
The tower represents sails billowing in the wind, a design accomplished using two large, white, sweeping metal arcs, which give the tower its spinnaker sail design. The steelwork was fabricated by Butterley Engineering. At the top is a triple observation deck, providing a 360 degrees view of the city of Portsmouth, the Langston and Portsmouth harbors, and a viewing distance of 37 kilometers, 23 miles. The highest of the three observation platforms, the sky deck, has only a wire mesh roof, so visitors are open to the elements. The windows extend above head height, so it is not possible to get a view unobstructed by glass. The glass floor is located on the first viewing deck at 100 meters above sea level. The tower has a design lifetime of 80 years. The Portsmouth Naval Memorial. At the end of World War I, the Royal Navy decided to commemorate its members with no known graves. This was a vast list as many deaths occurred at sea. British and Commonwealth sailors who were lost in the war was around 10,000. As no permanent memorial can stand on the oceans for these sailors, Portsmouth commissioned the Portsmouth Naval Memorial sometimes known as South Sea Naval Memorial. The memorial is made of Portland stone, with a prominent central obelisk topped by a metal finial. Steps lead up to a plinth bearing bronze inscription plaques fixed to the obelisk space bearing the names of the lost. Each corner projects as a buttress, surmounted by a statue of a reclining lion, beneath a stepped base to the obelisk. The four-sided obelisk tapers slightly to a stepped top with an elaborate finial with corner ship's prows and bronze supports to a verdigris copper ball. The memorial was unveiled on 15 October 1924 by Albert, Duke of York, later King George VI. With the loss of 15,000 sailors in the Second World War the memorial was extended to a design by Sir Edward Mouth. Names of those lost in the Second World War are recorded on panels set into the low walls of an enclosure added to the north, leading to a barrel-vaulted pavilion on each side. Additional sculpture was created by Charles Wheeler, William Macmillan, and Esmond Burton. The additions were unveiled by Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, on 29 April, 1953. The memorial is maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. It became a listed building in 1972 and was upgraded to Grade 1 in May 2016 for the centenary of the Battle of Jutland. During the late 1950s and early 1960s, British inventor Sir Christopher Cockrell had, in cooperation with British aerospace manufacturer Saunders Row, developed a pioneering new form of transportation, embodied in the form of the experimental SRN-1 vehicle, which became widely known as the hovercraft. Hover Travel is a ferry company operating from South Sea Hoverport which is adjacent to Clarence Pier in the South Sea area of Portsmouth. From here frequent hovercraft services leave for ride on the Isle of Wight. The journey time is quicker than the conventional boats that sail from Gun Wharf Quay, but the hovercraft are more prone to service curtailment in inclement weather. 
This service commenced operations in 1965. Hover Travel currently operates two 1200 TD hovercraft on a single route between Wright and South Sea. It is the only passenger hovercraft company currently operating in Britain since Hoverspeed stopped using its craft in favour of catamarans and subsequently ceased all ferry operations in 2005. Hover Travel is now the world's oldest hovercraft operator, and this service is believed to be unique in Western Europe. Hover Travel has claimed that it is the world's only commercial passenger hovercraft service. The operator's principal service operates between South Sea Common on the English mainland and Ride Transport Interchange on the Isle of Wight. HMS Prince of Wales, R09, is the second Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier. Unlike most large aircraft carriers, Prince of Wales is not fitted with catapults and arrestor wires, and is instead designed to operate vertical and or short takeoff and landing aircraft. The ship is currently planned to carry up to 40 F-35B Lightning II stealth multi-role fighters and Merlin helicopters, for airborne early warning and anti-submarine warfare. Although in surge conditions the class is capable of supporting 70 plus F-35B, the design emphasizes flexibility, with accommodation for 250 Royal Marines and the ability to support them with attack helicopters and troop transports up to and larger than Chinook size. Prince of Wales was assembled at Rosyth from 52 blocks built by six shipyards around the UK. Construction began on 26 May 2011 with the first steel being cut at Gavan Shipyard by Defence Secretary Liam Fox. In September 2014, Prince of Wales reached a final assembly phase when hull blocks LB02 and LB03 were floated into Dock 1 of Rosyth Dockyard, Scotland. During the 2014 NATO summit in Wales, Prime Minister David Cameron announced that Prince of Wales would be brought into active service, rather than sold off or mothballed. This was later confirmed in the government's 2015 Strategic Defence and Security Review. In April 2016, the ship was said to be around 80% structurally complete. On 1 September, 2017 HMS Prince of Wales most senior officer, Captain Ian Groom, confirmed that the carrier was now essential to fulfilling the Royal Navy's full carrier strike capability. Prince of Wales was formally named on 8 September, 2017 at Rosyth Dockyard by the Duchess of Rothsey, the wife of the current Prince of Wales. On 21 December, 2017, Prince of Wales was floated out of Rosyth Dry Dock 1 for the first time and manoeuvred to a nearby jetty for fitting out and further systems integration. A Merlin Mark II helicopter landed and took off six times on her flight deck on 23 September, 2019. The completed Prince of Wales began sea trials in September, 2019 and first arrived at her new home base of HMNB Portsmouth on 16 November, 2019. The ship was formally commissioned into the Royal Navy at a ceremony in Portsmouth on 10 December, 2019 berthing at Princess Royal Jetty. The ship's commissioning date marked the 78th anniversary of the sinking of her predecessor, a World War II-era battleship, which was lost in action along with HMS Repulse in 1941. She is the 8th Royal Navy ship to have the name HMS Prince of Wales. Construction of the ship began in 2011 at Rosyth Dockyard and ended with launch on 21 December 2017. 
She was handed over to the Royal Navy in 2019, and will be fully ready for frontline duties around the globe from 2023. HMS Warrior Britain's first iron-hulled, armoured battleship Launched in 1860, at a time of empire and Britain's dominance in trade and industry, Warrior was the pride of Queen Victoria's fleet. Powered by steam and sail, she was the largest, fastest and most powerful warship of her day and had a lasting influence on naval architecture and design. Work and life on board reflected both the changes the Royal Navy experienced as it evolved into a professional service and shifts in Victorian society. Built to counter the latest French battleship, Warrior was, in her time, the ultimate deterrent. Yet by igniting a new era in naval technology, she soon became outdated. After 22 years service, Warrior's hull was to be used as a depot, floating school and an oil jetty. Painstakingly restored in Hartlepool and back home in Portsmouth since 1987, Warrior is a unique survivor of the once formidable Victorian Black Battle Fleet and now serves as a museum ship and visitor attraction. HMS Victory is a 104-gun first-rate ship of the line of the Royal Navy. Ordered in December, 1758. Pitt the Elder, in his role as head of the British government, placed an order for the building of 12 ships, including a first-rate ship that would become Victory. She was laid down in 1759, and at her launch in 1765, shipwright Hartley Larkin, designated foreman afloat for the event, suddenly realized that the ship might not fit through the dock gate. Measurements at first light confirmed his fears, the gates were at least nine and a half inches too narrow. He told the news to his superior, master shipwright John Allen, who considered abandoning the launch. Larkin asked for the assistance of every available shipwright, and they hewed away enough wood from the gates for the ship to pass safely through. However, the launch itself revealed significant problems in the ship's design, including a distinct list to starboard and a tendency to sit heavily in the water such that her lower deck gun ports were only 4 feet 6 inch 1.4 meters, above the waterline. The first of these problems was rectified after launch by increasing the ship's ballast to settle her upright on the keel. The second problem, regarding the sighting of the lower gun ports, could not be rectified. Instead it was noted in Victory's sailing instructions that these gun ports would have to remain closed and unusable in rough weather. She is best known for her role as Lord Nelson's flagship at the Battle of Trafalgar on 21 October, 1805. Victory had been badly damaged in the battle and was not able to move under her own sail. HMS Neptune therefore towed her to Gibraltar for repairs. Victory then carried Nelson's body to England, where, after lying in state at Greenwich, he was buried in St. Paul's Cathedral on 9 January, 1806. After 1824, she was relegated to the role of harbour ship. In 1922, she was moved to a dry dock at Portsmouth, and preserved as a museum ship. She has been the flagship of the First Sea Lord since October, 2012 and is the world's oldest naval ship still in commission, with 243 years service as of 2021. HMS Spey, P234 Last of class, best of class as her crew dug her. HMS Spey is the fifth and final of the second-generation river-class offshore patrol vessels built for the Royal Navy. HMS Spey is a batch two river-class offshore patrol vessel of the Royal Navy. Named after the River Spey in Scotland, she is the eighth Royal Navy ship to be named. 
On 6 November 2013 it was announced that the Royal Navy had signed an agreement in principle to build three new offshore patrol vessels, based on the river class design, at a fixed price of £348 million including spares and support. In August 2014, BAE Systems signed the contract to build the ships on the Clyde in Scotland. The Ministry of Defence stated that the Batch 2 ships are capable of being used for constabulary duties such as counter-terrorism, counter-piracy and anti-smuggling operations. Batch 2 ships such as SPAY include some 29 modifications and enhancements over the Amazonas class corvette built by BAE Systems for the Brazilian Navy. SPAY was formally named on 3 October 2019. She began contractor sea trials in September 2020, and after they were completed, left the Clyde on the 28th of October for the delivery voyage to Portsmouth. On the 7th of January 2021, HMS Spey was handed over to the Royal Navy in Portsmouth. In late spring 2021. Spey received dazzle camouflage in Falmouth in preparation for deploying to the Indo-Pacific region with sister ship Tamer. HMS Spey was commissioned into the Royal Navy at her affiliated town, in Vergordon on 18 June 2021. HMS Dragon D-35 Dragon's construction began at the then BAE Systems Naval Ships, later BAE Systems Surface Fleet Solutions. Yard at Scottstown on the River Clyde in December 2005, and by December 2007 the bow section was in place on the Gavan Slipway. Formating with the other modules. Dragon launched from the slipway at Gavan on the 17th of November 2008 at 3 p.m. Her sponsor was Mrs. Susie Boissier, wife of Vice Admiral Paul Boissier, Deputy Commander in Chief Fleet and Chief of Staff. She was fitted out at Scottstown. Dragon commenced her first set of contractor sea trials on the 5th of November 2010. Dragon entered her home port of Portsmouth for the first time on 31 August 2011. HMS Dragon's main role is air defense, providing protection to her fellow ships by detecting, interrogating and neutralizing enemy threats with the fearsome Sea Viper anti-air missile system. Versatility is a hallmark of the Type 45 destroyer class, and HMS Dragon is capable of an array of duties outside of her air defense role, from providing disaster relief to counter-narcotics boarding operations. Dragon joined the Royal Navy Surface Fleet on Friday, the 20th of April, 2012. On Friday the 27th of April, she made her maiden visit to Liverpool, staying for three days. She opened to the public on Saturday the 28th of April. In August, 2013, it was reported Dragon was sailing with the USS Nimitz carrier group in the Arabian Sea, acting as the main point ship for aircraft control. In August, 2013, several typhoons from No. 6 Squadron IF were exercising with Dragon and U.S. fighters in the Gulf. It sailed westward to the eastern Mediterranean. In April, 2014, Dragon was deployed to waters north of Scotland, after sailing from Portsmouth to track the Russian warship Vice Admiral Kulakov. She was part of the Royal Navy's Atlantic Patrol tasking in late 2014, visiting places such as the South Georgia Islands, the Falkland Islands, and a transit through the Panama Canal. October 2016, Dragon tracked two Russian corvettes in the Atlantic Ocean and Bay of Biscay during a major deployment of Russian naval forces near the United Kingdom. 
on the 11th of February, 2017, Dragon rescued the 14 crew of the demasked and adrift British yacht Clyde Challenger in the Atlantic Ocean 610 nautical miles, 1,130 kilometers, southwest of Land's End, Cornwall. Clyde Challenger was subsequently scuttled. The 26th of November, 2018 press release claimed Dragon discovered a suspicious boat while on operation in the Middle East. Sailors and Royal Marines boarded the vessel, and found 148 bags containing 3,048 kilograms of hashish. The 15th of March, 2019, Dragon made its seventh drug seizure. 224 kilograms of heroin from a fishing vessel in the Arabian Sea. During her time in the Arabian Sea, Dragon made eight drug busts and seized over 18 tons of narcotics. HMS Duncan D-37 is the sixth and last of the Type 45 or Daring class air defense destroyers built for the Royal Navy. Type 45 air defense destroyers are one of the most advanced warships in the world. Duncan is named after Adam Duncan, 1st Viscount Duncan, the 1st of July, 1731 to the 4th of August, 1804, who defeated the Dutch fleet at the Battle of Camperdown on the 11th of October, 1797. She sails with a ship's company in excess of 280 personnel and is based at Portsmouth Naval Base. Duncan's construction began at the BAE Systems Naval Ships, now part of BAE Systems Surface Ships, Yards. At Gavan and Scottstown on the River Clyde in 2006. She was launched from Gavan on the 11th of October, 2010 on the 213th anniversary of the Battle of Camperdown. Duncan sailed from Scottstown Shipyard, Glasgow on the 31st of August, 2012 to commence sea trials. Duncan was commissioned on the 26th of September, 2013. She entered service on the 30th of December, 2013, four months ahead of schedule after a period of trials and training. She is the first of the Type 45 class to be capable of deploying Harpoon. On the 2nd of March, 2015, Duncan left HMNB Portsmouth on her maiden deployment to the Mediterranean Sea and Middle East. On the 7th of July, 2015, Duncan joined up with the U.S. Navy Carrier Strike Group 12 to strike the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. In April, 2016, HMS Duncan was one of several Royal Navy ships exercising with the French Navy in Exercise Griffin Strike. In October, 2016, Duncan, escorted by the frigate HMS Richmond, was dispatched by the Ministry of Defense to intercept and man mark a fleet of Russian Navy vessels, including their flagship Admiral Kuznetsov, which were passing through the English Channel on their way to Syria. In November, while sailing off the coast of England, Duncan suffered a total propulsion failure and was towed back to Plymouth. Duncan sailed from Portsmouth in June, 2017 to assume the role of flagship of NATO's Standing Maritime Naval Group 2. SNMG2, operating in the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. Duncan returned to Portsmouth on the 22nd of September, 2017. She resumed NATO duties in January, 2018, visiting Mediterranean and Black Sea ports such as Constana, Suda Bay, and Split, and again took command of SNMG2 returning to Portsmouth on the 13th of July 2018. In November and December 2018, Duncan featured on the Channel 5 television documentary Warship, Life at Sea, which captured everyday life on board the vessel during her NATO deployment earlier that year, including confrontations with Russian warships and aircraft, including the Russian frigate Admiral Essen. Series 2 is due to air in February, 2020.
In December 2018 it was announced that Duncan would be affiliated with the town of Scarborough on the Yorkshire coast. In July 2019 Duncan visited Odessa Harbour in Ukraine. On 12 July 2019 she was ordered to the Persian Gulf in response to threats against British shipping by Iran. On arrival she joined with the frigate HMS Montrose in protecting cargo vessels and oil tankers. In September 2019, Duncan returned to her home base at Portsmouth for a refit. It is frequently claimed by the ship's crew that Duncan can detect a tennis ball-sized object moving at three times the speed of sound, from over 100 miles away. RFA Diligence, a 132. RFA Diligence was a forward repair ship of the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. Launched in 1981 as a support ship for North Sea oil rigs. She was chartered by the British government to support naval activities during the 1982 Falklands War and was later bought outright as a fleet maintenance vessel. She gave assistance to the damaged USS Tripoli and Princeton in the 1991 Gulf War, and to Sri Lanka after the 2005 tsunami. She typically had deployments of five to eight years in support of the Trafalgar-class submarine on duty east of Suez, with a secondary role as a mothership for British and US minesweepers in the Persian Gulf. In March 2017, Diligence was towed from Birkenhead to Portsmouth where as of May 2021 she is waiting for disposal. HMS Westminster, F237 Known throughout the Royal Navy as the capital ship, HMS Westminster is a Type 23, or Duke class, frigate. Despite having originally been designed for anti-submarine warfare, the Duke class's versatility has seen them used in a number of fleet roles, from war fighting to peacekeeping missions. HMS Westminster is the second ship to bear the name. She was launched on 4 February 1992 and named for the Dukedom of Westminster. Westminster was used for the interior shots in the 1997 James Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies as three different, fictional, Type 23 frigates HMS Chester, HMS Devonshire and HMS Bedford. In 2004, Westminster was assigned one of the Royal Navy's first Merlin helicopters. Also in 2004, the ship was the first to be fitted with the new low-frequency sonar 2087 designed to detect the most advanced submarines. In November 2014, Westminster entered extended refit in Portsmouth. She returned to sea in January 2017 with a new principal weapon system, Sea Scepter.